Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we are coming to you with a review of Idols of the King by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Dedication. These to his memory, since he held them dear, perchance as finding there unconsciously some image of himself. I dedicate, I dedicate, I consecrate with tears these idols. And indeed, he seems to me scarce other than my king's ideal knight, who reverenced his conscience as his king, whose glory was redressing human wrong, who spake no slander, no, nor listened to it, who loved one only, and who clave to her, her, over all whose realms to their last isle, commingled with the gloom of imminent war, the shadow of his loss drew like eclipse, darkening the world. We have lost him. He is gone. We know him now. All narrow jealousies are silent, and we see him as he moved, how modest, kindly, all accomplished, wise, with what sublime repression of himself, and in what limits and how tenderly, not swaying to this faction or to that, not making his high place the lawless perch of winged ambitions, nor a vantage ground for pleasure, but through all this tract of years wearing the white flower of blameless life, before a thousand peering littlest littlenesses, in that fierce light which beats upon a throne and blackens every blot, for where he is he who dares foreshadow for an only son a lovelier light, a more unstained than his? Or how should England, dreaming of his sons, hope for more than the hope for more for these than some inheritance of such a life, a heart, a mind as thine? Thou noble father of her kings to be, laborious for her people and her poor. Voice in the rich dawn of an ampler day, far-sighted summoner of war and waste to fruitful strifes and rivalries of peace. Sweet nature, gilded by the gracious gleam of letters, dear to science, dear to art, dear to thy land and ours, a prince indeed, beyond all titles and a household name, hereafter through all times Albert the Good. Break not O woman's heart, but still endure. Break not, for thou art royal, but endure. Remembering all the beauty of that star which shone so close beside thee that ye made one light together, but has passed and leaves the crown a lonely splendor. May all love, his love, unseen but felt, o'ershadow thee. The love of all thy sons encompass thee. The love of all thy daughters cherish thee. The love of all thy people comfort thee, till God's love set thee at his side again. <sighs> this was a genuine delight to reread. It had been many, many years since I had originally read The Idols of the King. And it was always on my, I need to pick up a volume of this for my collection. Always on that list. And now I remember why. It is just enjoyable in the, the purest sense of enjoyment. It is good, down-to-earth poetry told by a, a poet at, I won't say necessarily the peak of his craft because I haven't read enough of Tennyson's work to know if this was his peak. But I do know that this was one of his magnum opus works. And it definitely is reflected in that. It is his attempt to take some of the Arthurian legend and make it more accessible to his modern audience. And it succeeds tremendously. In it. it gives some great stories, 12 of them in all, um, ranging from the Holy Grail, the coming of Arthur, the death of Arthur, the story of Tristan and Isolt, Merlin and um, you know just so many excellent characters and stories that you know and will recognize um, and and some that you may not recognize you probably don't know Gareth and Lynette or Balin and Balin which you should definitely read Balin and Balin 
uh, Peleus and Atare. You probably don't know those stories, but you will love them and enjoy them. Uh, in particular, my favorite is Balin and Balin. Uh, such a good story. It, it moved me when I first read it, and it moved me again when I reread it. It is a great story. And I'm sure you could probably Google and find a version of that poem and read it online for free. But if you can't, you should definitely pick up Idols of the King. And this particular volume had some pleasant surprises at the end of it. So not only does it include the idols themselves, but it's got part two, three, four, five, and six, plus a glossary at the end for part seven. I don't know why the glossary comes at the end, because at the, the glossary, so on page 311 of this, it is strongly suggested that the reader spend a few minutes with this glossary before starting to read the Idols of the King. Then why put it at the end of the book? I guess for those readers that like to, to read the end of the, the book before they start at the beginning, maybe? I don't know. But yeah, sure, let's just go with that. But anyway, I digress. Uh, it's got some wonderful things in there. And, and the part that I enjoyed the most, so it's got... A, part about enjoying the idols of the king, sources and comparisons for death of King Arthur, uh, two different little short essays on two different themes that are prevalent throughout a biographical sketch of Tennyson, but most important in the, the thing that somebody like Steve Donahue particularly would enjoy. Um, part five, is Tennyson a great poet? Opinions, reviews, and comments. So it's got some for, some against, and it was, enjoyable and there's a lot that I could resonate with. I kind of like the idea I've been doing lately of reading one one star review and a, a five star review on a whatever it is that I'm reviewing. And the 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 thing with Tennyson that you can see in here is when he's on his game, his poetry, his writing is magnificent. It flows really well. It's beautiful. It is a wonderful work of poetic art. And I thoroughly enjoy it when he's at the top of his game. But there are passages, there are times where he is almost a workman, almost uh, unremarkable, unnoticeable, uh, where he kind of fades into the distance as he's writing the, the poems. And... You know, and that's not necessarily a bad thing by any means, but uh, he he definitely has moments in this book where he just kind of fades into the background um, and, and has some unremarkable passages throughout. And that is not necessarily a knock against him. It would be an extreme challenge to have continuous uh, peak performance in something like this. Because it, it's a lot of poetry, a lot of lines of poetry, and it's such a good uh, content, good manner uh, subject that he's covering with King Arthur, that uh, he, he's going to, to have moments that are less than spectacular. You see it even in prose writing from people. So, I mean, I don't fault him for that by any means, but he definitely does have moments of time where he's not a remarkable uh, poet on the page in some passages, but other times it's just breathtaking and wonderful and magnificent in its delivery. And it's enhanced by reading aloud, as is all poetry. And it has cemented what Poetry Thursday was already establishing that I am very, very much enjoying reading poetry more often, and I want to continue doing it. So let's do a brief digression. So Tennyson here was, was doing these to make it more accessible to his modern audience, and he was doing that because if you've ever picked up Les Mort d'Arthur by Mallory, it's magnificent. You should read it. It is so wonderful. But just to, to give you a, a brief passage, I'm going to try to find a really short to, to 
give you an example of why it needed modernizing. Here, here's just a, a short little paragraph. That may ye prave, said la cote mal tail. With that she sent a, a courier of hares that alway rode with her. And so he rode they dear lightly, and spurred how in and what wise that knight escaped out of that castle. And if you look at the, the page here, I don't know if it can show up very well, but you know, you, you can read that, you can get the gist of it, but it takes some work. And so his attempt to make it more accessible, more readable for his modern audience is done well. And he succeeds very much at that. And I mean, th this is an easy five star for me. And stay tuned for the end of this video. But first, I'm going to read a one-star and a five-star review. The one-star review. Tennyson combines Shakespeare, Chaucer, and Mallory, then drains the blood from the chimera. He manages to make wealth, fame, war, and love boring, which I suppose is an achievement of sorts. Is iambic pentameter really interesting enough to sustain 260 pages? Does this text even benefit from being in verse? It just makes it more of a chore. Chop out the line breaks, I say, and patch together a piece of prose. Truncate the torture. I don't like blank verse generally. The last syllable of every line is stressed and then and left there hanging. And when the next line doesn't rhyme, it feels like an anticlimax every time. Poetry doesn't have to rhyme, guys. Tennyson has to contort the grammar to force it into pentameter. On page 132, Sir Lancelot went ambassador at first. He did what? Is that like going ape or going postal? On page 153, full simple was her answer. And on page 260, we get not fail for never once failing. This isn't poetic reconstruction. It's bad writing. Because of my style, fascism, I've so far overlooked a far bigger issue with the content. All, and I mean all, of the female characters are one-dimensional and detestable. An insipid ballet of Bella Swans. They're self-loathing, and it's clear the author loathes them too. At worst, they exist to hinder a man, and at best, they exist to admire him. Tennyson's verse is a veritable manifesto of misogyny. There are writings by George Orwell which lead me to believe Tennyson's short-form poetry is very good, so perhaps I won't give up on him yet. But this book is a bore. Off with its head. Well, Daniel, I tend to disagree with you. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. There, there's your one-star review. So let's go to a five-star review. This one comes from Terry. I have read my soft cover copy so many times it is falling apart. I really need to get a nice illustrated hardcover. I read this book several times a year and sob hysterically at the end so that I can hardly finish. The saddest lines for me are spoken by Arthur de Guinevere visiting her in the nunnery before the final battle with Mordred. Thou hast not made my life so sweet to me that I, the king, should greatly care to live, for thou hast spoilt the purpose of my life. The agony in those lines, and her lying there with her head in the sand at his feet, too ashamed to even look at him, and him heartbroken, and yet still he must be king. Having just come from battling his best friend and best knight, and knowing he rides off to his death, it's awful. The poetry is not only beautiful, but in such short verse, Tennyson is able to capture such powerful emotions. I fall somewhere probably closer to that than to the one-star review. It, it is a five-star review for me. I, I thoroughly enjoy it, not only for the Arthurian subject, because Arthurian is my jam, but as you know, I am not immune to being very, very disappointed in Arthurian retellings. I've had a host of bad ones this year, and only recently has been redeemed by Bernard Cornwell and Tennyson. But, uh, yeah, the, the poetry is great. It has me wanting to read more poetry. It has me picking up things like Major English Romantic Poets, The Collected Poem of W.B. Yeats, Paradise Lost by Milton, Lyrical Ballads by Wordsworth and Coleridge. I'm, I'm in a poetry mood. I'm still in a sci-fi mood. It's crazy. If you had told me that 
six months ago that I'd be in the mood to read those two things, I would have called you crazy. But I did also notice that I just reached 300 subscribers. Thank you, all of you. Um, I, I don't worry over subscribers or trying to be that person who is trying to gain more views. I could take time to do more things that could earn that. But I, I don't, that's not what I'm here for. But as a thank you to my subscribers, leave a comment below if you have suggestions on what you'd like me to do for a 300 subscriber celebration. <clears throat> but for the month of November, I'm going to be collecting names. So if you want to enter, you've got a lot of time to consider and to enter. I will probably choose that winner in the next week or so and start putting together a little gift to, to send out. And it will be this red copy of Idols of the King. Um, it, it's, it's a little beat up. I'm going to try to get a really nice copy. But if you want a reading copy, or if you're just interested in those extra things at the back, this is a great, great volume. I would also consider sending, if you're interested, a reading copy of two complete Sherlock Holmes novels, Study in Scarlet and Sign of Four. I'll have a separate video just to talk about this later and probably this weekend. A uh, reading copy of Science Fiction Carnival. I mean, it's falling apart if you want it. A pretty good copy of Foundation by Isaac Asimov. And perhaps the most scarce thing of all, a signed copy of my novella from my original publishing, A Merchant in Oria. It's short. You'll have no obligation to read it, to review it, anything. But it will show up with whatever else you want me to send. And, and we'll work together to figure out what all I can send to you, what you're interested in. But it will for sure contain these two. And we'll, we'll negotiate from there. But as a thank you to one lucky subscriber who comments uh, down below in this video or in the one that I'll be making probably sometime this weekend to formally announce it. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for Poetry Thursday where we conclude the Holy Grail out of Tennyson's Idols of the King and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.